And the reason I, the reason I ask you to know those structures is not to be mean, um, but those structures are ones you're going to encounter elsewhere. In other classes, you're going to need to know them, so you might as well learn them here. Um, and uh, I've picked only the most common ones that are there, glucose, fructose, ribose, and uh, sucrose. OK? Yeah. OK. Let's turn our attention to metabolism. We'll get started on that. We've got about five minutes left. And so now we're actually going to start talking about the chemical reactions that are being produced in the cell, in this case, to make some energy. We're starting to talk about metabolic pathways. When we talk about pathways, we think about these pathways as being kind of like roadmaps. Okay? If you're going from here to the coast, you have to go through Philomath. You have to go through Eddyville. And I guess you have to go through what else is on the way to the coast? That's about it, isn't it? Okay? If you're going to Portland, you have to go through Salem. You have to go through Albany, right? There are different mileposts along the way, different places where there's something there. Metabolic pathways are similar. Instead of having towns, we have enzymes. Okay? So to go to Portland, I have to go through several, several towns to get there. I have to go through Wilsonville. I have to go through Tualatin. I have to go through, um, I don't know, Woodburn, right? If I'm going to break down glucose, I have 10 different enzymes that I have to use. And I have to go through them in sequence. When I break down glucose, if I bypass the first enzyme, I've got a structure the second enzyme can't handle. The product of the reaction of the first enzyme is used by the second enzyme. And the product of the reaction catalyzed by the second enzyme is used by the third enzyme, et cetera, et cetera. So the product of one reaction becomes the substrate for the next reaction. Here's the big picture. Okay? This is what glycolysis looks like. Now, you're not going to get it out of this figure. I show you this to point out, first of all, that there are 10 different reactions in breaking down glucose. If I thought that I understood all of America's highways by understanding how to get to Portland, I would be mistaken, right? I would have a misrepresentation of what was there because the highways in getting us to Portland are part of a much bigger system. There's no place where the road stops and I'm at Portland and it stops at Corvallis and that's it. The road goes on and on and on. And the same is true of metabolic pathways. We talk about glycolysis as being this set of 10 reactions as if it's isolated from everything else, but they're actually connected to all the other metabolic pathways. The products here, pyruvate, can go to other things. The pathways are connected to each other. So what we call as an isolated pathway is not really true. It's not really true. It's part of the bigger picture. Okay? Pathways, metabolic pathways, are things that we define. I could just as easily say that glucose going to fructose 1,6-phosphate is a pathway. But then I would have to remember that fructose 1,6-bisphosphate can go to other things as well. So keep that in mind. All right? These things are not occurring in isolation. There's a soup of enzymes in our cells. This going to this, going to this, going to this. We'll discover that in metabolic pathways that some of the intermediates, like glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, can connect with other pathways. Just like when I go to Salem, okay, I can turn off of Salem and I can go to Silver Falls. Make sense? Don't forget that. That's a very important part of metabolism. They're like highways. They really are connected. Yes, sir? So when you say it's made up of 10 reactions, what exactly are you talking about? From glucose to pyruvate, there are 10 reactions. That's correct. OK. Now, what else do I want to say here real quickly? Um, let's stop there. I think that's actually a good place to stop, because I've got to talk about the enzymes. I don't want to get, get too started on that. See you guys on Friday. Okay. Um, Is that one of them? Um, you were showing me the 
showing the beta alpha. Uh huh. You showed the alpha one first, which was just alpha one four. Uh, and then let's the see. The next one was beta beta one four. Okay. Do you need both of those? So here's alpha one four. Yes. And then the question was. And then the next slide, it was beta beta. Uh huh. Um, but then, do you need both those betas? What do you mean, do you need both those betas? Are you supposed to write both those betas, even though both of them are in the beta form, and the other one, both those were in the alpha form? Well, okay. So here, you're describing two anomeric carbons. Okay. One to one, right? Yeah. And the other one, there's only one anomeric carbon. This guy, back here, there's only one anomeric carbon. The other anomeric carbon's over here, right? Yeah. The four in glucose is going to be down no matter what. Okay. Right? And is that why... So if, if I have two anomeric carbons, I have to describe the structure of both of those. Okay. Make sense? Good yes. question. Um, and then, so for the for the... For the cellulose, it looked like one was up and one was down. That's the same reason. Okay, so let's look at cellulose. Okay, so when we look at cellulose, okay, so there's number one. Number four is always going to be down. Always. Because that's because, glucose. Because okay. that's the structure of glucose, right? Okay, that makes sense then. Um, and then from your previous lecture, you said selenium had to be in your diet. Partially, even though it's toxic. Where do you get it? In your, I mean, virtually anything you eat is going to have selenium. Just yeah, it's it's a very very tiny amount. It's, it's very difficult to have a selenium deficiency. There are places in Oregon where there are organisms that, like cows that eat grass, it's very selenium poor, and they can actually be selenium deficient. Uh, but for the most part, it's you're just getting it in the food that you're eating. It's there. Okay. Yeah, because other organisms need it too, and they've eaten it. You're eating them. Okay. But yeah. it's still just a small amount and the toxicity and everything else we don't yeah. worry about. Yeah. Okay. And then one last one. Uh huh. You were talking about plasmids. I understand plasmids in the laboratory. You said that they're only found in bacteria and they're not found in our and us. But then you can put them into us. But they but they don't have replication origin, so they'll just die. Okay, so our body doesn't attack them or anything else. Yeah. Not seen as they'll just they'll just them. get dissolved, basically. Nothing happens to them. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Question. Polysaccharides branching like amylopectin or. All, are they all identical to each other? Like, are two different amylopectins identical? No. So, so it's, it's a relatively random okay. thing. It's, it's on average, like I said, 30 to 50. So there's not a, an exact spacing. So no. if it just shows, shows enough shared characteristics, they'll call it. Like, yeah, it's, it's a class of molecules. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, about lactose intolerance. Okay. Um, I know someone that can't like drink milk or you know eat cheese, but when it's like cooked and processed, uh -huh. they can metabolize it. Fine. Is there some kind of chemical reaction? That Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. Um, it may be that um, I have to think about anything. It may well be that one of the things that happens with sugars is you get caramelization. So that happens as actually an oxidation reaction that's going on. So it may well be that they're oxidizing a part of the. Uh, lactose with the heating, and so they're having less pure lactose. That would be my guess. Okay. I don't know. Right, yeah. Hi. I just have a question on the nomenclature. You yeah. Is it just all the names that you mentioned, or just all the words that you said? That's what you would want us to know. The things that I mentioned, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not like a specific rule of how to name. Um, I'm not. We're not going through. Yeah, we're not going through general rules of that. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Um, so I think I'm gonna retake this class okay. during the summer. Oh, okay. Uh huh. During the online course. Um, so I was just wondering, like, how that works. It's like a forty okay. course. Sure. Let me. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what. Let me go take turn the camera off. I'll be happy to answer your questions for you. How about that? I've got to get this set up here. So. But yeah. So the way the the summer course works is essentially identical to the way this class works. So, for example, if you were to go, in fact, I can. Oh, I, don't, I can't show you on here, but if you uh, I, I, if you'll send me an uh, email, I'll send you a link to my eCampus course. You're looking at everything that I've got here, okay? So the students in my eCampus course right now are taking the course, looking at the lectures from last year. So on day one, they see the same page that you see, except for they've seen all those lectures filled in. 
with last year's stuff. So you get all the lectures day one, and everything else looks exactly the same. So um, the only difference between the eCampus course and this course, besides me physically being present, um, is that on the eCampus, um, you take a, a different form of exam. So you take a multiple choice exam. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so if I do it in the summer, it's like four, four weeks away? It's four weeks, uh-huh. Okay. So, so it's fast. Yeah. Yeah. So is that like a test every week? It's about a test every week, uh-huh. Okay. Um, and, and I'm here, so if you have questions, you're always welcome to come and ask me questions. Okay. Um, well, I'll probably be taking it like at home. Uh-huh. Where's home? Okay, uh huh. Yes, so and that's fine. What you need to do is you need to talk to the eCampus, and they, they approve the proctors, and that's pretty straightforward. I've got people right now in Japan taking my class, for example. So you can, as long as you have an approved proctor, you're fine. Okay?